we knew that Rudolf Hirsch was the commandant of Hospice concentration camp, and uh, since this was part of my lawsuit, I was very anxious to get a hold of Rudolf Hirsch if that were possible, but we couldn't find him. Ultimately, the British did locate Rudolf Hirsch, who had been hiding out uh, as a farmer and uh, near Flensburg. So I asked the British to send uh, Hearst back to Nuremberg so that I could interrogate him here in Nuremberg. But the British were glad to do so, of course. And uh, so I spent three days with Rudolf Hirsch, the commandant of Auschwitz concentration camp. Uh, and he was sitting in a room right up the, down the hall here with a reporter and, and, uh, and uh, we talked quite frankly across the table. Hearst was a very unimpressive individual. He looked like a clerk in a, in a grocery store. He didn't look like a big Nazi or murderer or anything like that. Uh, but he was responsive to my questions as <coughs> almost all of the uh, uh, defendants and witnesses were. Uh, you had to drag it out of them, but they didn't lie much. So, uh, Hearst, uh, I thought, was pretty much telling the truth, uh, and uh, I asked him how uh, it was that uh, Auschwitz had been turned into an extermination camp, as, I, as we had heard. He said, well, he said, what happened was that uh, uh, he had been a, uh, in charge, or he had been uh, in the concentration camp business, and. Uh, last in Sachsenhausen, and he was assigned the task of establishing a new uh, concentration camp at the uh, Glagwitz, Poland. And uh, the German name for this new camp was to be Auschwitz. And uh, at that time, there was nothing about uh, any extermination or anything like that. He just went over there, and uh, this was just the beginning of the attack against the Soviet Union, and uh, uh, there was need for big uh, space to accommodate the uh, Soviet prisoners that they expected to capture. Well, anyway, the Hearst went over there and set up this camp using slave labor from other concentration camps. And I got in, in good running order when uh, uh, Himmler called him to Berlin. This was in 1941. And uh, so he went to Berlin and talked to Himmler. And Himmler, you know who he was, Reichsführer SS, the top man uh, next to uh, Hitler himself, and completely in charge of the whole extermination program. And uh, Himmler told uh, Hearst that uh, there was a secondary war going on here. And Hearst said, well, what is that? And he said, well, that's the war against the Jews. And he said, if we don't win this war, if we lose, the Jews are going to exterminate the, the Germans. But he actually believed this nonsense. And he said, uh, now Hearst, he said, what I want you to do is go back to Auschwitz and you establish extermination facilities there because Adolf Eichmann of the Gestapo is going to round up uh, the Jews in Europe and send them up to Auschwitz and you're going to have to uh, dispose of them your job. So uh, Hirsch went back and never thought of resigning or asking for another job or anything like that. <clears throat> so I went up there to carry out this job and that's what I did. And uh, he uh, established the, uh, in time the greatest extermination facility ever built in any camp in the history of the world. So uh, uh, Hirsch uh, uh, But uh, uh, I asked Hearst then, of course, uh, well, uh, how many men, women, and children uh, did you murder in this camp? And he told me, just like uh, this gentleman sitting next to me, two and a half million. Well, you know, uh, the ordinary person would be terribly shocked by that, but not a trial lawyer. And so I said to him, well, Two and a half million, but the conditions there were terrible, weren't there? How many other people, how many people died of uh, starvation and, uh, and mis mistreatment other than in the, uh, in the, in the gas chambers? And he, uh, he said another half a million, so I don't know. Uh, as it turned out, after the 
our trial, we turned Hearst back to the polls. See, the uh, understanding was at the outset uh, that uh, uh, those uh, individuals who were guilty of crimes in occupied territories would be returned to those territories and uh, tried by those uh, those countries. So we uh, had to turn Hearst back over to the polls. And while he was in custody at the polls, uh, he uh, wrote a book uh, telling his life story. And he uh, said that the figure he had given me of two and a half million was too high. He said that figure had been supplied to him by Alan Eichmann, who, as I said, was the head of the Jewish section of the Gestapo. He said that, that was, uh, he said, uh, even Auschwitz didn't have that capacity. Well, anyway, he was then brought to trial uh, by the Polish High Tribunal, the trial of war criminals, and uh, he used the affidavit which I had obtained from him in that trial. I mean, they used that affidavit, as, wherein he had told me that he killed two and a half million people. And uh, the Polish uh, Tribunal, of course, found him guilty, and uh, they concluded that he may have killed as many as four million. That was the Russian figure, by the way. So Hearst was convicted uh, by the Polish Tribunal and uh, he was taken to Auschwitz and hanged on the grounds of Auschwitz. And by the way, the gallows on which he was hung are still standing where they were the last time I was at Auschwitz. Nuremberg now stands at the pinnacle of human rights in the world. You know, in 1515, Albert uh, Durer mapped the stars of the northern and southern hemispheres shining over medieval Nuremberg. In 2005, this very year, uh, we gaze upon those stars, the weather's permitting, still shining in the firmament, and find inspiration for a reincarnation of man. Gone are the tyrants of the 20th century. The persons of peace and human rights have taken their place. The clear waters of the river Pegnitz flow through the city, murmuring a constant message. End war. End war and the crimes of war. Find peace. Find peace and the blessings of peace. Not for this moment in history alone, but for time uh, without end. This is the message of Nuremberg for our troubled world. Terrific. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you, Anne.